Hey friends, welcome to the Victor Marks podcast with Victor Marks, founder of All Things Possible Ministries. Welcome to the show where we bring you real conversations facing life's hard truths, stories of redemption, and the latest from the front lines. Whether you're on the road, getting your day started, or finally settling in, we've got an exciting new episode planned for you. So let's dive into today's show. Over the next couple weeks, we're excited to share with you powerful messages from guest speakers and teachers live at the KMG Conference, speaking biblical truth, confidence, and leadership into men striving to show up boldly for the call on their lives. Be encouraged and challenged by each of these great communicators to strive to live a life like Christ. Here is today's message. All right, let's get to it. Why are you here? Why would you get up on a Saturday morning and drive or fly into? I know there's a brother in the house flew in from Seattle. Why are you here? I'd like to suggest that for whatever reasons why you're here, yes, it is about Jesus, but I want you to suspend any expectations or any thoughts in your head about why you're here and open your heart. Because the problem is, is a heart issue. We are as jacked up and as broken as they come. And I don't want to, like, get on a rant here, but I'm just going to say this and get it out. I'm personally tired of hearing from the perfect Christian guys that got it all together. And if... If we don't acknowledge our brokenness, if we don't acknowledge we're jacked up, if we don't acknowledge where we're at, what we're doing in the middle of the night on our phones, we shouldn't, then let's just invite Satan right in to squat in our lives. You know, we hear all about, well, I'm addicted to porn, and my gosh, I'm, I'm a mess, and I, I, don't, I don't like my wife so much, and all these reasons. I'm going to bring a word to you in a moment about what we're to do about that, because I believe that the battle is at hand. See, I I talk a lot about spiritual warfare and the battle, and Major General's gonna talk literally about battle and spiritual warfare. I know Daryl's got a word, Victor, everybody's got a word on what we're doing as men of God. But I just wanna challenge you. Do not be passive. Thank you for being here. Thank you for supporting our ministry, but don't check out anymore. Commit right now to be engaged this morning. Open your hearts. Listen to what the speakers have to say and ask God for guidance because I'm telling you, I'm not one of these guys, I don't have prophecy, I don't get to see visions. Sometimes we get woken up in the middle of the night and I believe God woke me up a number of weeks ago and he said, write this down and I I wrote it down and sometimes we have these powerful dreams and we think God really speaks to us and we wake up the next morning Oh, wait, what did I write down? And it's like, unicorns aren't real. (laughs) And I looked down, and I saw, I wrote down in the middle of the night in a deep sleep, this is a battle for men's hearts and souls. And I believe that's God's word for us this morning. This is a battle. And I know in, in certain circles, it may not be popular to talk about the battle. We're gonna talk about who Jesus is, for sure all morning, but I just want to ask you again, why are you here? And what is a man of God? And who is God? We have a culture that talks all about God. Who is God? Don't waste your time this morning being passive. Make a commitment right now to engage with everything that will be shared. Men, we were created in the image of God as a man. I'll say it again for those of you that may not have heard me. We were created in the image of God as men. Y'all get that? Okay, but who is God? Let's take a moment to look into Scripture, Exodus 15, 3. Exodus 15, 3 says, the Lord is a warrior. The Lord is his name. The Lord's a warrior? Huh? Well, I know we hear all about 
Jesus being compassionate and loving and forgiving and he healed and all of that is absolutely true. And we praise him and give him glory for that. But scripture says the Lord is a warrior. And if we're created in his image, what does that make us? I can't hear you. Come on. I ask and challenge you today, especially those of you that don't know Jesus Christ, to listen closely to what many of our speakers will share about him, how their lives have been changed forever by asking him into their lives and to follow him. And for those of you that say you know him already, and I'd ask you that you re-examine who you think he is. Who do you think Jesus is? Is he like Mother Teresa? Is he like Mother Teresa or is he like William Wallace from Braveheart? You all need to come up and preach. You got it. John Eldridge who's a man that I call a brother in Christ who is going to get involved in KMG next year. That's the rumor. And, and by the way, I, my t- count is ticking down. I want to be respectful and give Bobby ample time. But I just want to say this, and I'm going to go off my script a moment. There are some churches that have strong, vibrant men's ministries, and they get it. And there are some churches that aren't sure about how they're to address manhood in this day and age. And there are some churches that honestly, man, hmm, maybe maybe it's better to go without being said. Right? I mean, this John Eldridge in the 90s, Wild at Heart, phenomenal book, there are leaders in the church that say this is outdated, that this isn't who men are anymore. Culture's changed. We need to morph into culture. And I say that's a lot of nonsense and a lot of hooey. So, John Eldridge writes, when we ask the question, is Jesus more like Mother Teresa or William Wallace? John says, the answer is it depends. If you're a leper, an outcast, a pariah of society whom no one has ever touched because you're unclean, if all of you have ever longed for is just one kind word, then Jesus is the incarnation of tender mercy. He reaches out and touches you. On the other hand, if you're a Pharisee, and there's a few of those walking around these days, one of those self-appointed doctrine police, watch out. On more than one occasion, Jesus picks a fight with those hypocrites, and he called them hypocrites. Take the story of the crippled woman in Luke 13, the background, and if you've seen Braveheart, you'll kind of get a context here. Pharisees are like the Scottish nobles in Braveheart. Who has not seen Braveheart? Don't raise your hand. (laughs) The nobles loaded burdens, heavy, on the backs of God's people, but they don't lift a finger to help them. What's more, they're so bound to the law, they insist it is a sin to heal someone on the Sabbath, for that would be doing work. They've twisted God's intention so badly they think that man was made for the Sabbath rather than the Sabbath was made for man. Mark 2.27. Christ has already had a number of skirmishes with them, some over the very issue, leaving those idiots wild with rage, Luke says in 6.11. So here's the question. Does Jesus tiptoe around the issue next time so as to not rock the boat? Which I think is the preference of some of our leaders today. Does he drop the subject in order to preserve church unity? No, man. Jesus walks in, he baits them, and he picks a fight. That spirit is in you. And I'll tell you this, and we'll hear stories of the manifestation of evil. There was a couple, you may have heard on my show recently, good intention, 
nice, sweet young man and woman. They're kind of new agey. They're kind of lovey-dovey spirituality. They decide, and he makes public statements. Evil is, is make-believe. It's not real. And to illustrate his point, he and his girlfriend decide to do like a worldwide bike tour, going around the world, raising awareness that it's about love, it's about getting together. And one of the many areas they go to, they go to Tajikistan, a known area where there's a lot of terrorist activity. And this guy wanted to prove a point, that evil is just make-believe. Well, I don't want to get graphic here, but he, his girlfriend, two other people were executed, murdered brutally by terrorist remnants. And there he is trying to issue and make a public statement about evil is not real. Man, if you don't look around the culture and see what's going on, and God didn't make you to be passive, God didn't make you to be indifferent. You all hear what I'm saying? Along the lines of picking a fight, I suggest maybe we've never really thought of ourselves as warriors. And I know this may be a little scripturally iffy, but talking about picking a fight, you ever picked a fight with Satan? Really quiet in here. Have you ever picked a fight with Satan? Like, I'm done with you. I've had enough of you coming over my family and my house, and I've got the blood and the authority of Jesus Christ to send you back to hell where you belong. It's almost like we need permission these days to be men of God. I think a lot of dudes are, well, yeah, I, I, I just, we don't know. So I'm here to say, Daryl's here to say, Bobby, Victor, the general, Vince, everybody else, look, time to step forward as men of God and maybe pick a fight. Amen? Amen. God has intentionally made us to know him, love him. Live for his glory. So how are you living that life right now? Truly only you know and God knows. John Elwards talks a lot about posers. I was a poser for most of my life. Acting like I wanted to be loved by other people, acknowledged by other people. My dad left when I was young. I didn't know what it meant to be a man. So I thought being a man was beating dudes up or sleeping around with women or all the messed up messages we've gotten from our biological dads, whether they were there or not there. But look, the bottom line, and I'm going to talk about excuses in a moment. We've got a Father in heaven that loves you. You're his son. He made you for victory. He made you in Christ. And I'm here to tell you, look, yeah, we got wounds. We got all sorts of reasons to walk around, maybe hate our dads, or he was never there. But the bottom line is, we hear it. Forgiveness is the only path. Let your dads off the hook. Forgive them. He may be the biggest idiot walking around on the planet. You may never knew him. He may have messed up your mom. He may have still messed up your family members. But look, God is your father. Abba, father, he's your daddy way before your biological dad was there or not there. So what are your desires? I, a word that guys get all wigged out about. I mentioned the word dangerous on the show, and oh, don't say that word. Oh, no, that's not. No, we, we can't be dangerous men. And I'm not going to go too long here, but really? Really? What? So what are we to be? And again, I don't want to pound on the church much, but I think a lot of men in the church, they think we're supposed to be nice guys. I think we check off the box, went to church. My wife's off my back for a moment. Or we're just bored. God made us with a fierceness. And a lot of guys know it's in there, maybe somewhere in there, and you've forgotten that. I'm here to say, it's time to wake it up. Amen. God put a fire in us. Amen. He illustrated it when he walked this earth 2,000 years ago. He didn't walk into the temple 
saw the money changers and go, oh boy, let me, come on, come here, let's talk, come here, let's hug it out, come here. No, you're, you're doing something not good, so please consider maybe mm, not doing it again. Scripture says he formed a whip. He didn't go walking in there with his arms open. He drove them out. He drove all the animals out. And in case you don't know, that really iffy last book of the Bible, Revelation, you may want to read it. When he comes back, he's not going to have his arms wide open singing Kumbaya. He is going to right all the wrongs. So maybe this morning it's time to get right with him because he's coming back real soon. Am I a little angry? I, I, I have emails, Frank, you're so angry. I'm tired of being a nice guy. I'm tired of letting Satan just stomp all over my family. I mean, you pray over your house, do you know, again, the authority by the blood of Jesus that you have? And we, we prayed about, it's time to rise up. And there's some of you in here, well, not me. If not you, who? Why is life so hard? I think it's time to quit asking why life is so hard. Take that hardness as a call to fight and face it down. Man, I believe we're all here today to rediscover our warrior hearts. And join the great warrior, Jesus Christ, in his battle against evil. Amen? Amen. I can't hear you. I don't believe Jesus was the poster boy for pacifism. He wasn't the world's nicest guy. And I'm not here to offend, but I was raised in a certain faith. I don't think Christianity asks men to be altar boys. I believe they call us to be warriors. Because man is made in the image of God who is the great warrior like father, like son. God gave you a warrior heart because you were born into a world at war. Surely you're aware of this. If you stand for God, does everybody come alongside you and say, man, you're you're all that in a bag of chips? No, you're opposed. Constantly. The world pushes back on us. Oh, Christians, oh, you, oh, goodness gracious. God gave you a warrior heart because you were born into a world at war. You're aware of this. Your hopes, your dreams, your friendships, your joys, if you're living for the Lord, they're fiercely opposed. How many men will walk through this world with hardships and endure it? How long are you going to persevere? Well, the X factor is how many of us identify now as a warrior in Christ? A man may have a job he hates. Praise God, it's not me. An arrogant boss. Couldn't be further from the truth from my boss. Thank God for him. But if we see these challenges as warrior training, guess what? Iron sharpens iron. For those of you that are married and you're in a difficult marriage, The only way you're going to make it through is if you perceive as a warrior. The only way you're going to love your wife is if you love her as a warrior. God made men and women equally and uniquely different. I know a lot of guys, I've gotten so many emails from guys that are walking out on their marriages, from wives that bought tickets for their husbands on the brink of divorce. The only way your marriage is going to work is if you seek Jesus and you become a warrior in your marriage. So let me close with a couple of thoughts. What is a warrior? What's the heart of a warrior? The heart of a warrior says, I will put my life on the line for you. No matter who the you is. I'll not let evil have its way. There's some things in this world that cannot be endured. We got to do something, men. There's freedom to be had in this battle. 
So I believe it's time to move forward as men of God. Don't ask yourself what the world needs. Ask yourself who you are in Christ. Church has always faced obstacles when dealing with men. And I don't think we should ignore this. But today, the overwhelming truth is that men are absent or unengaged in churches. We're going to get real honest here. What does Ephesians 6 say? Did you put your armor on this morning, men? Some of you don't know what Ephesians 6 is. Some of you, praise God, are here. You might not know who the Lord is. This isn't church service. This is man service. Finally. Be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, men, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand firm. The greatest lie of the world is that evil is not real. A lot of cultures say they believe in God, throw Jesus Christ into the equation, and guess what? Then we get a little iffy. Evil? Oh, no. Satan? No. Look, I don't have to tell you, when you surrender to Jesus, you become a warrior for him, things get real interesting. But the battle's here. And I just want to, look, you're going to be encouraged today. We're all about praising God, amen. But he's put in my heart, look, I'm tired of being passive. I'm tired of being indifferent. And I want to ask you, are you tired as well? Are you tired of just going to bed at night like there's got to be something more than this? Or, man, I wish my wife was different, or I wish I had a different job, or I wish I had more money in the bank, or I wish I had hair on my head. Man, seek the Lord. He will make all your paths straight. He's the only answer in this life. So let me leave you with this. I just read Ephesians 6. Man, it's time to armor up. It's time to truly live with whatever breath he gives us. And I challenge you this morning to rise up and become warriors who will change the world. I call on you this morning that we may raise up a new generation of young men to rise up and transform the world with the message of Jesus Christ. We declare it this morning right here, right now. Amen? Amen. Thank you. Thanks for joining us for today's episode. We'd love to stay connected with you and invite you to the conversation beyond this podcast. You can check out more of the work we're doing around the world at victormarks.com, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, all linked in the show notes. Be sure to drop us a comment in the review section if today's show has impacted you in any way or if there's anything you'd like to hear more of. We're always encouraged to hear from you. Thanks for spending your time with us. Until next time.